Welcome back to part 3 of our Let's Play of Super Mario TKO. This is just following behind part 2 of Proton John's Let's Play, and uh, please excuse me if I cough. I think I cut Proton John's cold over the internet. Somehow. This level is uh, bullet time. It's one I made. It's a secret level, so it's meant to be a little bit harder than most of the normal levels. Oh, I gotta do my trick here. I always do this trick when I play this. Yeah, we actually hacked it so that uh, the bombs in this game still go off after you kick them. Originally in Super Mario World, they would reset every time you kick them, which was kind of annoying because you can't time explosions the way you want them to. They go off whenever they feel like it. Uh, so, that's one thing we did on purpose. I'm trying to get back up there because there's a secret I want, and I can't do it just from jumping off the Koopa, so I've got to get back up there with a springboard. The only reason I came down is to get that red coin. Look where that got me. Yeah, what I've, what I do for a 100% run. The music here is pretty simple. I just wanted to make something very percussive, so it sounds kind of like the sound of bullets being shot. You know, nothing too... Amazing. Son of a... Here we go. This cloud character here is based off the uh, custom Lakitu, which drops whatever you want. Gotta get my mushroom while I'm down here. And sometimes this particular one drops Koopas. Yellow ones, so you get another coin. I mean, we can... Yep, we can make them drop whatever we want, so in this stage we have them drop coins and Koopas. In other stages they drop different things. And there's the bonus star. And now it's time for the hard part. We actually uh, used a custom thing or a jock that makes it possible for us to have a lot more sprites on the screen than usual. Before we couldn't spawn anywhere near these many bullets at a time and we couldn't spawn more than one bonsai bill, but it's kind of essential. There needs to be lots so you can get across the big giant pit. And here we go. And made it. First try. Oh, crap. Now the way you're supposed to get those red coins is with a springboard, but you can jump on these bullets just the same. We kind of like the idea of having multiple solutions to most of our puzzles, as long as it's not too broken or unbalanced. That we like to let players get creative. The Bullet Brothers you see there were an idea that NDK250 came up with and uh, Dispari coded them sort of for him so he could use them in his hack, but we're like, well, let's use them for ours as well. We like to have a large variety of new characters. Okay, next up would be the Yellow Switch Palace, probably one of the more hated levels in TKO because it's it's kind of hard compared to a lot of the others. I mean, there are no enemies at all, but it's all puzzles and People don't like using their brain, I guess. I mean, honestly, it is a little frustrating when you play puzzle levels like this and you don't figure them out right away. And here's one of the other variations of the star music that I was talking about. And unfortunately, you're not going to really get a chance to hear the whole thing because I zipped through it so fast. Oh well. This next part we're heading into used to be sort of a Super Mario Bros. 1-1 remake that I guess Despari did, and it turned out it was a bad idea. You don't usually want to do that. Uh-oh. Um, okay. That's not our fault. That's a bug with the Super Mario World engine. But I actually talked to Despari, and she's going to fix it in the level anyway, because she's just awesome like that, guys. Let's try this one more time. This time I'm going to take the cautious approach, I think. I'm not going to go over that. I'll just drop it off here. There we go, that's good enough. I've heard a few people complain about this part where there's four items and you're just supposed to guess which one you're supposed to use, but like Despari said, it's not so much guessing, you can actually figure it out. I mean, there's a key, but there's no keyhole anywhere. There's a shell, but there are no blocks or enemies to hit. And that just leaves a springboard and a P-switch, and you just use a P-switch to get in. So, I don't know, it makes sense to me. A lot of you probably already know the solution to this room, but I'm going after a secret here, so I'm going to take a little detour back to the 
cloud thing for the third time. And here we go, and I need to go higher. There we go, bonus star. Okay, this isn't going so well. I don't think it's more interesting. Oh, well, this level's theme was actually originally inspired by a song written by Queen Elizabeth entitled My Betsy Ann, in which she sings about her golden retriever. There's nothing resembling a dog on the actual level, but Desparty and I listened to the song one night. There are paint fumes in my house up here in Canada, and Desparty's drink was laced with prescription drugs that Gary Busey had slipped in, and we just suddenly both felt inspired by the music and broke open Lunar Magic. I drew a perfectly flat horizontal level with about 300 Koopas and a few bonsai bills. I gave it to her, she changed the foreground graphics to look like the inside of a cave with stalagmites, stalactites, and so on but still kept the open sky above because she thought it looked trippy. None of that really survived the final level, but that's where the idea originally came from. Not really. Those frozen coins are just like the ones in uh, Super Mario Bros. 3. You, you throw a fireball, it thaws them, and you can collect them. I get the feeling my commentary is a little bit less than impressive right now. Like I said, I'm a bit sick, so it's kind of coming out with not much enthusiasm. I think it's like having Ben Stein do a Let's Play of TKO. Your work is shoddy and inconsistent. We kind of went crazy with all the different rooms in this palace. I mean, well, I mean, Despari went crazy with putting all the different places, but I similarly went crazy with all the different music, but... I, I'm planning to reuse all the music somewhere else. I mean, it's not, like I'm not using all that music just for that one room in the Switch Palace. Like, that ship some map is actually sort of a it's meant to be a ghost house sort of setting so that is one of the ghost house uh, pieces I'm gonna be using later and of course there's the ice castle we're planning to actually have that that room that you go through be an actual part of the ice castle so you can kind of see where you came from and by the way you don't have to use that double grab glitch that Proton John was mentioning this is what you have to do. It's not that hard, I don't think. I mean, I didn't get it the first time, but it's 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 quite doable. So, for those of you who saw Proton John's video and didn't notice his annotation, that's not what you have to do. And here we are at the end. That wasn't too hard, was it? I kind of went through this level pretty fast, actually. I don't know, I, I wrote the music, so I, I, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I just, I don't know, I, I like it. All of the other reindeer. Yeah, I don't know. I th that one part was just inspired by uh, Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer for some reason. It just fit, I don't know. Don't, don't judge me. And the end. And oh, wow. I haven't changed that music yet. I should probably get on that. Alright, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and sorry about sounding so sucky.